I wish I would have just started when I was thinking about it. So for anybody that's listening to this or watching this and you're thinking, you know, like, oh, next year or next month or after this or after that, like stop putting it off and get started because you're never going to grow if you, if you never get your show off the ground. This audience summit is brought to you in partnership with Podcast Notes, the best ideas from the world's best podcasts in minutes. Travis. Welcome to the Grow Your Podcast audience segment brought to you by Lewis and Kyle Show. We're super excited to learn from you today. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me, guys. Happy to be here. Uh, real quick, for those in the audience who aren't familiar with yourself and or your show, could you introduce yourself, your, your podcast, the when and why you started it and what the mission is? Yeah, sure. So my name is Travis Chappell. started a show called Build Your Network uh, a little bit over, over three years ago now. And it was really just in an effort to kind of do something similar to what you guys did, which was explore how to make money in a way that was uh, more conducive to the lifestyle that I wanted to live and something that would give me the freedom that I wanted, the kind of the impact that I wanted, the lifestyle that I, that I wanted to live, all of those things. And I saw podcasting as the vehicle that was going to allow me to get there. Um, but I didn't really know what topics to talk about. And the only thing that I really had much experience in at the time was uh, door-to-door sales. I was 24 um, at the time and uh, just got out of doing door-to-door. And so so I initially was going to go down the sales path, but it was just too crowded of a space. So networking was kind of the second best thing for me. And it turned out to be a space that really nobody else was playing in, which was a surprise to me. And uh, it allowed me to kind of to, to kind of craft my own market um, over the last few years. So mission of the show is basically just to help people that were in a similar position that I was in. That was just like, I, I was starting with zero connections in a space that I wanted to be successful in. And so we basically just tried to decode the networking and relationship building strategies of people who have built really, really strong networks. Cause we all know your network is your net worth or your average of the five people that you hang hang out with the most. And so it's one of those things that's super, super important, but a lot of people never take the time to learn how to do it better or implement it on a you know purposeful and consistent basis. And so we try to encourage folks to do that and give them the tools necessary to be able to do that effectively. Well, great. Thank you for sharing that backstory with us. First question for you, what has been the most effective marketing channel for growing your audience and how have you used it? Yeah, I'll give something a little bit maybe more unconventional here because uh, I know that you're asking this question to a lot of other people. And I'm sure you're getting kind of some of these same boilerplate answers. So I'll I'll just give something that um, is is for for me was the biggest way that I grew my audience back when I first started the show, <clears throat> and it seems counterintuitive because it's not going to bring you huge numbers, but it will grow the show. And so I tell people that in order to be able to grow your show to huge scalable audiences, you need to be able to be willing to do what doesn't scale at the beginning. So at the beginning, I did one-on-one phone calls with anybody that was in my audience that would give me the time of day. Anybody that I found out was listening, even if they didn't book me through my calendar link that I told them to go to on a call to action on my podcast, I would, if I found out that somebody had listened to me, like if I if say they reached out in a private message, if they emailed me, if they like, if I figured out somehow that this person was paying attention to anything that I had to offer, I would ask them to jump on a one-on-one, a one-on-one phone call with me. And I just gave away a ton of my time totally for free. Didn't ask to get paid. I wasn't trying to sell anything. All I was doing was trying to build relationships with the people who were taking the time out of their day to listen to my show. Cause if you think about it, take really take a second to be grateful for, for, for that listener, um, it's pretty cool to, to think about. Even if you only got 12 of them, it's cool that they are taking the time out of the million other shows that are out there to listen to your show. And so um, I think that it's that it's um, uh, on you as the host to be willing to spend some more of your time with them and get to know what you know what drew them to the show. What do they like about it? What do they not like about it? You know, anything that you can or can't do to improve it or make it better. Um, and then it allows you the opportunity to kind of get some real data from real listeners who actually can care about what you're doing and talking about um, and then gives you a chance to have like a, a way to stay in touch with them at the end so I would always just try to filter people after one-on-one phone call into my Facebook group and just say hey we'd love to continue to get to know you better over my Facebook group which allowed me to start really building a cool um, you know close-knit community of people that are listening to my show and, and like I said at the beginning it was like 200 300 people in the group or something like that but uh, but over time that that really starts to become like a really tight-knit close community of people um, and, and they really feel like they're early adopters from the beginning if you're, if you're willing to do that. So um, that, that was probably the biggest thing that I did to grow my show at the beginning uh, because those listeners t- are no longer just listeners. They turn into kind of evangelists of your show, right? Because if they're sitting down with five of their friends and they're talking about podcasts they listen to, 
which one are they going to be more likely to recommend? The one where the host just got on a call with them for, you know, 15 minutes the other day for free or the one where they've never met the host and probably will not meet the host because it's like Gary Vaynerchuk or Tom Bilyeu and somebody that has a crazy amount of demands on their time, right? So I think that it gives people the desire and the urge to share your stuff a little bit more because it makes them feel better about recommending like a newer show and it makes them look like a rock star if the show is actually really good. Um, and you pr prompted all that just by being willing to give them some of your time. So that, that'll be my answer is uh, just book one-on-one -on -one phone calls with anybody in your audience that's willing to jump on a call with you. Yeah. And I think that <clears throat> that's a, a very consistent pattern among these different interviews that we've done is just the, the extent to which people will go after their audience in order to, to speak with them and connect with them really determines it's kind of been an upward scale in terms of like the level of podcaster, the, the biggest one we've interviewed is directly engaged their audience every day. So there's definitely something to that. And then the, you know, the, the comment about who are they more likely to, to recommend to their friends. It's like, there's, that reminds me of a politician who's campaigning. It's like every person whose hand they touch is probably going to end up voting for them just like based on seeing them and being in front of them. So I, I really like that answer. And, and the next question kind of uh, I think plays into what you were just saying, but we'll see if you can think of another example. So what are some underrated tactics that you've used to attract listeners to your show? Yeah, I probably should have saved that one for that one. But uh, <laughs> uh, I would say another thing would be a, a community growth, uh, like, like a Facebook group or something like that, a way for people to, like there's magic in the community aspect. There's It's one thing if you're listening, the, the podcasting is great for so many things. One thing that it kind of sucks with is audience engagement. There's no way for audience members to engage with each other. Like if you're, if you follow someone on YouTube or on Instagram or something like that, there's comments on the post. There's comments all over the thread. There's comments on the whole channel. You know what I mean? Like there's just, there's so many ways that you can go interact with users yourself, but also there's a lot of ways for those users, followers, your audience to engage and interact with each other. And podcasts just doesn't exist. So if you're not purposeful about putting them into an environment where they can meet other people who have similar interests in your show, then that community aspect's never going to be there. And uh, I think that, I think that if you're not, if you're not, using that to your advantage that you're making a really big mistake. Plus it gives you another, another outlet of lead generation that isn't just your podcast. Like you, like you might, like people might start joining if your Facebook group comes, becomes good enough, then they might start joining your Facebook group and then hearing about your podcast because of the Facebook group, not just people who listen to the podcast and then hear about the Facebook group. So I think it becomes a, a tool to grow the show with um, through the community that you're building, but it's also a way to continue further engaging the audience that's giving you the time of day on your show. Uh, that's a great answer. And I think uh, you've kind of been doing a great job of pedaling right into the next question here, because just like that was a lot of community building and creating strong fans because they have that sense of belonging. Uh, but in what additional ways have you converted listeners into fans? So you kind of established that you've found ways to have a large reach, uh, but in what ways have you kept the same people coming back? Um, yeah, it's kind of just more of the same um, in terms of an answer. Uh, so uh, what I mean by that is, engaging with them in multiple capacities in different platforms and different modalities of communication. So one of the best things that I've done for my audience is live events. And I know that 2020 has kind of put a damper on that, um, but hopefully we'll get back to a lot more of that in, in 2021. But some of those are some of the best things that I've done is hosting like international retreats for for audience members and, and taking a group of people to Thailand or a group of people to Bali. And next week, next year, we're going to Costa Rica we did a, a live event out here in Vegas with 100 people last year. Um, those types of things have have been huge needle movers for the whole brand as a whole, just because we always get really great video and uh, and, and and picture like footage from those events. And it, so it moves the needle for the brand as a whole, but it also moves the needle in terms of relationships and engagement with the people that you that, that are there in your audience and fosters that community aspect on a much, much deeper level because it's all in person. Uh, so, so those have been those that, I mean, like engaging your audience on a platform besides the one that they found you on, I think is a, is a crucial aspect. I like that answer. So the next question for you and the next question for everybody in our summit is if you could start your show over again, what would you do differently to grow it more effectively? I would start sooner. 
that's that's the real answer is as i would have i would have just started sooner i would have uh, i wish i would have just started when i was thinking about it so for anybody that's listening to this or watching this and you're thinking you know like oh next year or next month or after this or after that like stop putting it off and get started because you're never going to grow if you, if you never get your show off the ground the other thing that i wish i would have done from the beginning is at least test spending money on growing the show um, and just trying to work out different traffic channels because that's something that I've had to do now um, recently that that I have more of a budget. And I, I just kind of had this limiting belief that if I didn't have a large budget, that it wasn't worth putting ads behind it. And I think that that's just a, a, a false, um, uh, just like I said, a limiting belief that's that's going to prevent you from growing your show. Whatever budget you have, you know, put it to use and uh, and just trust that, you know, something like one of these days, one of these traffic channels is going to is going to really, you know, um, uh, get traction for you and your show. Great. Well, that leads great into the last question, which is if you did uh, have to get into that scrappy mentality and start doing some paid promotion, if we gave you a thousand dollar marketing budget for your podcast, how would you spend the money? Uh, one of two things, uh, to be a guest on somebody's show or to do an ad spot on somebody's show. The number one way to grow your podcast audience is through other podcast audiences because it's the only way that you know that you're reaching somebody who's a podcast listener it's you it's, it's a unique platform in the sense that you know if you run youtube ads to your youtube channel you know that they're watching you on youtube but if you if you run youtube if you run google ads you know what i mean then then google can take you directly to to youtube and that's like a workflow that everybody's okay with but when you search for something and like a podcast comes up, people don't like click on the podcast link and go listen to the RSS feed. You know what I mean? Like unless they are a podcast listener, does that make sense? Like what I'm saying is like all, like almost all Google users are also YouTube users. Like there's 2 billion monthly active users on both platforms. You know, Facebook, there's 1. Some, 1.7 billion or something. Instagram, there's 1. something billion. There's almost a billion on LinkedIn, like all these other platforms are just so large and podcast listeners are, you know, 250 to 350 million, I think at this point. So it's just a fraction of the audience that's on Google or YouTube. And so if you try to advertise to them on YouTube or Google or Facebook or any of these other platforms that a lot of people are buying media on, um, you're just not, you're not guaranteed to reach those people. And sure there are different, you know, targeting things that you can do to select groups based on people they follow and that they're more likely to be a podcast listener. But at the, at the end of the day, you don't really know. The only way to know for sure if they're a podcast listener is if you're reaching them on a podcast. So if you're going to spend money on it, try to buy ad spots on similar shows in your niche or, or use it to try to book guest spots for you to be a guest on somebody's show within your niche. Great. I think that's a great answer. And uh, we really appreciate you coming on here, Travis, and, and sharing with our audience what you've learned from growing your podcast, Build Your Network. So if if our listeners would like to check you out more to, to consume your podcast, your content, where should we send them? Yeah, sure. You can go to any podcast platform and search Build Your Network and find it right off the bat. Um, or you can just go to my website, travischapel.com. There's a lot of great stuff over there. If you're a podcaster and listening to this or watching this right now, you should definitely go check out the new software that we just released called Guestio. It basically connects high-level guests to podcast hosts and other content hosts. Um, so if you have a podcast and you want some really high-level guests to come on your show, then you can go to Guestio and book them. Some, a lot of them are for free. There's a lot of people on there that are free, really high-level folks that I was surprised don't charge anything. Um, other people charge stuff, uh, but uh, there's a lot of people on there for free too. So uh, go create a free account and go browse you know, all the different guests that you can bring on your show. Absolutely. Thanks, Travis. Thank you so much for watching this interview. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe to our channel right here on YouTube. And if you feel like you learned something, share this episode on social media to help us grow our audience as well.